Here's a quick little video of how radio projects kept me sane during the COVID times. Hey there, Cycle Camp here. I wanted to uh, make a quick video about how ham radio projects kept me sane during COVID 2020 through 2021. I live alone with my cat. I do have family in the area, but it was difficult to contact them during this time. And uh, I need stuff to do. I have to keep myself busy. So I put together a bunch of little projects during the uh, COVID season. I just want to do a quick video to show you some of the things that I did to keep myself busy and my uh, brain active. So uh, let's change camera angles and uh, I'll show you, I'll give you a quick overview of all the stuff and then I'll talk about each one individually for just a couple of minutes. Okay, so here's a kind of high level do view of the desk and I'll talk about some of this stuff. First thing I did was I, I made a lot of cables. A lot of cables for different people, and uh, so we've got uh, you got this guy here, which is a cable for a foot switch. We got this guy here, which is a cable I made to go with this other project that we'll talk about in just a minute. Uh, you know, cables for using chirp, cables to the, the CIV type cables, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I also rehabbed a, a frequency counter. I had one of those little frequency counter boards, and it was very difficult to use because it flapped all over the place. And I and it was it was supposed to be nine volts, but I have uh, I have uh, radio supplies here, you know, where I have extra cabling so I can run things at 13.8. But I couldn't really run this at 13.8, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, I made a uh, injector and detector kit for audio. This is an audio injector and detector trace kit that we'll talk about. I put together a 40 dB attenuator uh, from Pacific Antennas. I actually think this uh, this other guy. A lot of Pacific Antenna stuff. I like their kits. This uh, this uh, tracer kit is also from Pacific Antenna. So I did that. And finally, an RF probe, which I didn't have. I didn't have a decent RF probe. And this was a great uh, in, uh, starter kit for that, that you can use with a 10 meg ohm uh, uh, voltmeter and all that kind of stuff. And then I've got one other, one other uh, uh, cable kit that I'm working on, and that's uh, I'll talk about that in more detail a little bit. So, so basically, lots of cables. Uh, mo mostly these were for friends of mine, and, and one or two that I needed myself. Uh, this uh, attenuator kit, I use this for fox hunting, and I also use this when I'm hooking up stuff to test gear, because you frequently need to attenuate stuff down for test gear because it can't handle any kind of large uh, voltage swings and stuff like that. Uh, and finally, I, I made an attempt to have boards made. Well, this is pretty cool. These are the Gordon Gibby uh, audio interfaces that I love because these have built-in uh, Vox, well not Vox so much, as they, they detect the energy coming in the transmit and they give you a key or relay. Uh, and you can run them on 12 volts. There's a, there's a 5 volt adapter that goes on these. Um, I'll talk about them a little bit more uh, when we get there. So let me go into a little bit, uh, just quick detail, a minute or two on each of these various projects and tell you what it was for and, and what I did. Okay, with. so the first little project was actually for a friend of mine. I've got a friend who uh, got some kind of debilitating disease where uh, he couldn't really use his hands very well, but he still wanted to talk on the radio, and he needed a way to talk on the radio without squeezing the mic all the time. So naturally, we thought, hey, how about a foot switch? So basically, I found this big white cable on the Internet, and it's an extension cable for the standard 8-pin uh, telecom cable that's commonly used in a lot of microphones, and that's a microphone that he used. And I was able to open it up and add a quarter inch jack uh, to operate the push to talk. And basically what we used to do this, really funny, uh, it turns out that tattoo machines use these switches, these foot switches that are very similar to the ones that you find on a sewing machine, except that a sewing machine is graduated. The harder you step on it, the, 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 uh, it changes the resistance and it, it feeds more power to the uh, sewing machine. But tattoo machines are on or off. They just have little switches in them. So I was able to put this uh, switch together, uh, this cable together for him, and uh, he can now use his radio at home and step on it instead of squeezing it. And that's good for him, and it gave me something to do. I actually made two of them because I said, while I'm at it, I'll make one for my radio. Uh, I found that I didn't like working the radio as much with my foot. 
Um, so I, I, I don't use it, but in any event, I, I built two of these. Then I got uh, interested in uh, the uh, Yaesu 857, 897 series. A friend of mine had a radio for that, and I wanted to capture the... Uh, uh, he asked me to do some work on his radio, and I wanted to capture the contents of the radio with Chirp. And I couldn't do it because you needed a special cable again, and it's just a pain in the butt. So I used one of these little FT-232 converters that convert a USB into a TTL serial. And it turns out that if you run these at the 3.3 volt setting instead of the 5 volt setting, you can actually cross the transmit and receive lines and run them together. Uh, this is very useful if you're using like a CIV implementation like ICOM uses where they use a single uh, physical line to transmit both the transmit and receive data between the two devices and the two devices take turns sharing that line. Well this device it turns out if you run it at the 3.3 volt level and there's a jumper on the board to allow you to do that uh, you can you can make those common and the device will still function just fine. However the 857 and the 897 don't require this they just need the level shifting. And these RS-232s, I mean, you can get these really cheap, a couple of bucks a piece if you buy them in quantity. And uh, I use these a lot. And as, as a matter of fact, so I made another one. Where the hell did I do it? Here it is. Uh, I made another one for my FT-7900R. And the FT-7900R, again, it's a one-pin interface, whether you're transmitting or receiving. So it's ground in one data pin. Uh, but you have to, on the on the... FT-232, you actually uh, short the uh, transmit and receive together and, and all of that. So it works pretty well. So I made another one of these for my FT-7900, which I use all the time. And now I, I love Chirp because I, I had a QIT radio as a base, and I could bring up the page of the QIT radio, bring up the page of the FT-7900, and then directly copy everything right from one radio to the other. Uh, not not the radio to the other, but from the one page to the other, and it just made it so much easier. I really love these things. So uh, those were some cables that I made, and the last one, I made some ca uh, cables for a friend of mine that's got an ICOM, and one of his ICOMs is the newer ICOM that uh, uses CIV interface and also has the ability to uh, do cat control, but his other radio uses a CIV interface, but it's like the 718, it does not allow you to control push to talk and in order to do push to talk you have to use uh, uh, either data terminal ready or request to send on the on the the equivalent serial interface well it turns out that the the FT uh, 232 FD FD 232 I, I'm not sure I've got that right but uh, anyway it turns out that those guys have that ability so I'm working on uh, a cable for him so these are the, the two pins that are going to go to, and this goes through an opto isolator, which is strapped to the back of the board. Uh, these go are going to go to the push to talk on the 13 pin interface. What a pain in the butt, ICOM. You could have done better with that. Uh, and then the regular transmit of CIV goes through the regular uh, transmit receive data pins of the of the FT232. And uh, that was pretty cool. So I used uh, uh, an opto isolator to, and you know, and a, a biasing resistor. I mean, a, a current control resistor and stuff like that to make that happen. So that that one's almost done. We're we're just about ready to go and, and finish the final assembly on that cable. Okay. One of the other things I did over the over the winter was a friend of mine was interested in CW, and he was just going to start learning CW. I'm going to bring this down a little bit further now that we've got smaller stuff. And uh, I always had one of these little stupid, you know, $15 CW readers, and I wanted to play with it. So I made a cable, of course. Here's a cable for my, uh, my uh, FT-79. Uh, oh, actually, this is for my uh, FT-450. So this is a cable that goes into my FT-450. And I have switches on these so that I can switch them back and forth between different audio sources. Um, and I, I tried using one of these guys. And, you know... It's really kind of weird. They they work good sometimes, and then they don't. And what I found was, I went and looked at the, I went and looked underneath this under. Well, let me let me take this off. Underneath this, this uh, 
display board. It's just a display board. Here's the actual main circuit card, and here's what they're using as a, a, a phase lock loop uh, detector. They're look. They're using this as a as a detector, so that when you set with this with this resistor, you set the uh, the tone value that you want and then the tone comes in through here and when the tone is is close enough this locks up and it lights up this little LED well what you would find is you'd start receiving and things would be fine and then your your uh, your accuracy would start tailing off and I'm talking about things that are machine made like uh, uh, W1AW you know their code tests uh, where you know it's machine generated, so you know it's not a, a question of somebody do, you know sending lousy code. Uh, but what I found is this is just drifting too much, and I believe if I replace some of these components that set the the uh, the bandpass for this, I believe if I went to to uh, serious components like one percent silver uh, silver caps and stuff like that, that I could actually make this work a lot better. So that was another thing that I've been playing with over the uh, over the winter. And uh, and uh, you know maybe if I if I do get it to work really good, I'll let you know what I changed and where I got the parts. So that's what happened with that. Okay. So what else did we do this winter? Well, this winter a friend of mine, uh, N1 NUG uh, Rob, he built this, which is a 40 dB attenuator. So it's got it's got uh, in different steps. It's got a one, two, three, five, ten, and twenty. And when you hook them all up together, you get like 41, you know, I'm not real good at fast math like that. And you can take it in and out of circuit very quickly. Now, this is not something you use for severe, uh, you know, any kind of real big wattage. You can't use this with real, real big wattage. But it's a real simple kit. It's easy to put together. And uh, it does the job. It does a great job. And I just used this the other day. I was checking the uh, transmit frequency on one of my DMR radios, and I wanted to, to jack the antenna of the DMR radio right into the frequency counter, and I just came through this attenuator, and it made it really easy for me to do that and do that checking. So these are handy little guys. Now, they don't give you a box or anything, uh, which is kind of too bad. I suppose I think they have a guy that has a... He has the files to print the bottom box, you know, to give it some place to stand. But they just give you these little, they just give you these little, uh, these little uh, uh, rubber feet, you know, stick-on standoffs, which I use like on my cabinets at home and stuff like that. But uh, that was a quick little project, and it and it ended up being very useful because uh, it was it was it was uh, quick to put together, and I like the BNC connectors. I do have a, I do have a 40 dB attenuator. Uh, that I use for other things. Uh, there's none. That's what I get for putting these things back in the bags. You, know, you can never can never get the bags apart. Okay, so I do I do have this groovy little 40 dB. I think this is a 10 water. Yeah, this is a 10 water. So, but this has SMA uh, connectors on it, and so there it's a little more fragile. You know, so I don't I don't like using this if I don't have to, and it's not adjustable. So having one that's adjustable is, is really, you know, that's that's the bee's knees, man. That thing really works good. So that was another quick project that I put together. Again, this was uh, from Pacific Antenna and uh, uh, QRPKits.com, I think it is. And uh, these guys, these guys do a great job at this stuff. Okay, one of the latest things I just got through building is this little guy. So what this is, this is an audio tracer a signal injector and tracer and basically it it's very obviously it's very simple to build you use it with a set of headsets so you put a you put a stereo headphone in here and uh and you do a set of headsets it's got a uh, you know it's got a little on off switch and all that and a little green light to tell you that it's running it has adjustable uh uh gain so because it because these are so close together if you turn it all the way up you can actually hear the injector the transmitted signal in the trace signal and it, it comes with all you know everything you see here with the it comes with the leads and the you know the fittings and the hardware and all of that stuff and I've it actually works great I was very pleased with this if you're going through the audio side of something if you're looking at an audio amplifier or you're or you're tracking the uh, you know like the output of your uh, your mixer uh, uh, decoder and you're trying to find out why you're not getting decent audio out to your audio amplifier you know this is a handy little guy and uh, so again, an another cute little kit that you know. That's, there's another day of the of the COVID uh, crisis that uh, 
I spent doing something else besides that. And again, this is another Pacific Antenna uh, device. And I, I do not get any money from them. They don't send me any free stuff. I just really like their stuff. Okay. So, one of the other things I had was I bought one of those really cheap... Uh, uh, frequency counters, you know that. So this is an eight, an eight-digit frequency counter, and if you see through here, as you can see the holes where you you can push the little buttons. Uh, I am not much of a fabricator. I can put stuff together, but I'm not much of for fabricating stuff myself. And I had this box hanging around, and this thing was such a pain to use. Uh, th this little this little uh, device was such a pain to use. Pardon me, I, I, I had my, I had my, uh, what do you call it, my camera. I, I just hang my camera on a, a cross member for, for a mic stand that I use. That's how I get the camera over the desk. Um, but it's, so the, the problem that I was having with this was this thing was flapping around all over the place, which was a real pain. And, and the other problem I was having with it was that it, it required 9 volts. And 9 volts is not something that I'm real happy with here on the bench because I run everything on uh, on a ham 12 volts, which is like 13.8, you know, 13.6, 13.8 right in there. So what I ended up doing to make this a little more usable as a bench instrument was I happened to have this box hanging around. I bought two or three of these when I was working on another project. And... So I had this box hanging around. I went and got myself one of those DC to DC converters. And I mean, you can see there's not much to this. So here's here's the here's the original board. And anybody that's had one of these probably recognizes the back of this board. Um, DC to DC, but then I just put in a DC to DC converter so I can run 12 volts into this. This takes it down to nine. And then the 7805 on here takes it down to 5. And that keeps this 7805 is getting really hot. You know, if I were, was running at 13 volts, it'll work. You know, but it just it just was not working very well. And I was able to put a, a nice BNC connector on it, you know, an on-off switch. And the, uh, the nice plug in the back. So, so th this was just something I did to make my life a little bit easier uh, while we were while we were uh, doing our projects and stuff. And I'd, I mean, since then I bought another frequency counter, but this one still does a great job. And this is a, a nice small one. You could take it out in the field. And if I'm in the field battery operated, I could still use this because the, uh, the uh, you know, it, it runs on 13.8 or 13.6. So pretty cool. Uh, I like that a lot. So, well, I'm not going to try to finish putting it all together because it's just taking too much time. Okay, um, so another thing that I did, which I had a lot of fun with, was I love the Gordon Gibby uh, audio boards. And I'll show you, uh, you probably won't be able to see this too well, but let's, let's take a rock under. So here's my, here's, my, here's my bench, right? And there's all my, you know, there's my radios and my microphones and all that. So I've got uh, one, one, two, three. Three, three radios and uh, a TNC and a, a MFJ. Uh, uh, oh God, uh, MFJ tuner, IntelliTuner. I love this, by the way, the 993B. That's that thing. That is an incredible IntelliTuner. I love that thing. Um, and here's my here's my uh, monitoring side. This is where I can bring in audio from different places to the different radios. There's my cross scale meter. There's my, when I hook my SW, uh, SDR radio up and use it as a, uh, as a, oh, well, I'm just having a bad time remembering what these things are called. Uh, when I'm using that to get my big uh, uh, band display and all that, it's all good. And then these guys here, this is a clock. Another kit, by the way, I love these things. And this is a, a whisper. This is one of the, well, actually, this is a QRP uh QRSS. This does Whisper and Hell Shriver and all kinds of other junk. But this is great for beaconing. This does automatic beaconing. So that's that's a lot of fun. Well, one of the things I really like is I for the audio, I like to have a separate audio channel for each of my devices. And I don't like using the Windows audio channel. And I while I do have a, a signal link, 
I, I use the signal link uh, only portable. You know, I don't use it here on the bench. So what I use here on the bench, let me see if I can get this where you can see it. So here is a Gordon Gibby board all assembled. And in back of there, that thing with the red light on, that's like a $3 uh, uh, USB sound card. And it turns out if you take the USB sound card and you bring it into the, the, the Gordon Gibby uh, interface, you just leave off the uh, 7805 converter and you, his interface runs directly on 5 volts. So you get everything you need right there. And there's a, there's a second one up there. Now that one, that one I, I've set up a little bit differently because that one has the 5 volt uh, uh, converter on it. So I really love these. So I wanted to make a couple more of them. And I couldn't because the, the QRP kit guys that were selling them stopped selling them. So I, I did some work on the internet, and I actually found Gordon Gibby, the nice guy that he is, he set up a, Gib, a GitHub site that had the board files you need to have these boards manufactured. Now, the only problem is these are version 2.2 instead of 2.3. The only difference between 2.2 and 2.3 is the layout, the physical layout, and the silk screening on the board. The circuit is identical, but but the, uh, the the layout's not quite as good as the 2.3 board, and I have been unable to find the 2.3 files anywhere. But the cool part is, so I went to I believe it's PCWay.com, and was able to upload these files, and for like ten bucks plus a couple dollars shipping, they made me ten boards. That I'm all ready to I'm all ready to open them up and use them. I'm just waiting for the uh, read relays are kind of special and the audio transformers. I'm just waiting those to come in from China and it's a slow slow boat from China. And then I'll be setting these up. And what I'm hoping is I'll make uh, kit packages out of these and give them to my local uh, ham club, the uh, the ham club that I belong to, and see if they want to do a build night or something and have some fun with these. And uh, I can also show them how to use the uh, the little audio cards and how to tap off the five volts and all that so that was something i did and and learning which files you had to have and and you know i had to buy some software so i could actually visualize it so i could see what i was getting i, I didn't buy the software i'm sorry i found some freeware to do that with and and so that that was a week or so of of investigation uh before i ordered these of course it took like two months for them to come in but it was really a lot of fun, and that was very useful. It kept me very busy during the COVID. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you is the last thing that I just got through building. And it's it's sort of a cable, I guess. Oh, darn. I apologize. I normally run this off to the side, and today I have it right in front of me. So every time I turn around, I'm, my legs are catching the, the wire. So this thing is a kit, a, another kit. And this is a uh, this is an RF probe, and basically what you can do with this is you can use this to probe for RF in a circuit, and you plug it into the banana jacks on your meter. This is the the ground for the thing that's under test, and this will read if if you have a meter that is 10 to 12 uh, meg ohms uh, input impedance, this will read direct RMS voltage for you. So it's good to, it's a thing to, kind of a go, no go, is a signal going through and all that. Now this is, I mean they give you everything here except the labeling, I put the labeling on here myself, and it does have, because there's a, there's a uh, diode in there, there, it's 50 volt max, that's the reverse breakdown voltage of the, uh, of the diode. But other than that, they give you everything else, and the thing that's really cool about this is the tip. It actually has a, a springy tip, so you don't you know stab it to death when you're in there working on the circuits. It actually has a spring-loaded little tip, and they give you two of these. They give you well, you have to build it. You can see that relatively <coughs> crummy soldering job. Uh, the spring tip goes into this little steel tube, and um, they give you two tubes and two tips. So you can make more than one in case you in case you screw them up, but I just thought this was a neat little guy, and so if you're if you're at 10 megs, I don't know if you can read that. Uh, there we go. 
uh, if you're at 10 megs, it's one to one in RMS. If it's a one meg uh, input impedance, then it's what you're reading uh, is it's a oh god, I, I wrote this wrong. I can't remember if you have to multiply it by four or it is a or it is uh, one quarter of. So you, you got me. I'll have to go. I'll have to go uh, reread the manual and change my label. You know, label gun madness here. I I, I didn't think before I printed that together. But this is a, a, another very cute, this is a very introductory kit. It's very simple to build. Uh, it's great if, you're, if you don't have a lot of experience uh, soldering stuff together. There's no surface mount or weird parts. You know, it's all through hole and all that. Uh, really decent. And, and uh, a, a good addition to the bench. So, you know, uh, so in addition to building cables for people and working on little projects and stuff, you know, I was able to build some things that help the bench go a little bit better. So, anyway, those are some of the projects I worked on this uh, this season. I've still got a few more in the works, as you can see. i got to finish that other cable for the ICOM, and I want to put together some of those, uh, one of those uh, Gordon Gibby boards. But uh, it's been a pretty good season, and these little things, in addition to the regular, you know, rag chewing and having, you know, having fun talking to people and all that, I also built a couple of antennas uh, this season. I put up a new disc cone for a scanner. And I uh, built a coaxial uh, VHF UHF paper uh, uh, paper tape, not a paper tape, uh, tape measure, tape measure antenna uh, to use with satellites. And I'm putting, the, I'm getting the parts together to build one of the uh, really cool uh, transit mounts, uh, automatic uh, mount that does elevation and azimuth, uh, and is all computer controlled with a with a uh, uh, with a uh, I don't remember if it's a Raspberry or an Arduino, but it, it's one of the two. But, uh, you know, pretty cool. So these are the kind of things I've been doing to keep myself busy and, uh, and uh, avoid excessive drinking and stuff like that. <laughs> so I hope you found this interesting. I hope some of these projects uh, whetted your appetite and you might think about doing some of this stuff for yourself. Have a great afternoon, and thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it.